Hello, everybody, and welcome back to TarHillIllustrated.com, or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated. I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me as he always does, THI publisher Andrew Jones. And Andrew, we're here for yet another episode of our UNC Football ISO series, which we've been running throughout the offseason. If you haven't seen those videos, you guys know what to do. Click the channel below, and you'll find a playlist right there on the front where you can all, not only see our UNC Football ISO series videos, you can also see our UNC Basketball ISO series videos as well. So go check out those out after this video is done. And, of course, head on over to TarHillIllustrated.com. Link in the description below. Sign up to be a premium member for just eight thirty three a month. Can't stress enough how good of a time it is to join our community with all the recruiting stuff that's been going on since the recruiting dead period lifted earlier in June. So just so many things we've been rolling out. Dina King's been on fire. David Sis has been on fire. Of course, AJ's been on fire as well, facilitating and helping them out with all that as well. So head on over there to our website and sign up if you want to get a little more recruiting scoops, know a little bit what's kind of going on behind the scenes with, with some of this recruiting stuff. And you can only get that if you're signed up as a premium member but that's enough of the shameless plugs in our video let's move on to des evans in this one as you can tell by the title is the guy we're going to be talking about um des is a guy first going to give kind of my opinion then i'll kick it to you aj des is a guy that so many unc fans that i know at least are just excited about um i was talking to, to my brother a couple of days ago and i don't even think we were talking about des but he's like man i think des is primed for a really big year this year and he's not the first guy i've I've heard say that since he really committed a couple years ago to the Tar Heels. I think he's a guy that fans are excited about because of what we've seen last year with him, because of his body type, because of how highly rated he was out coming out of high school. And, and I think he's just a player that really has a bright future. Now, looking back to his season last year as a true freshman, played in 10 games, started in three, 10 tackles, two tackles for loss, one forced fumble, played about 170 snaps for the Tar Heels. I think we talked a little bit about him as well as a guy that played kind of from the get-go, but then kind of had that, I don't remember what games it was in particular, but we didn't see him as much. Then he kind of came back into the fold. I'm sure you'll be able to remember a lot better than I can, but Des Evans, a guy that we saw glimpses of last year of what he can do, particularly towards the end of the season. And I think really for him, it was just about getting a little more physically stronger, understanding the playbook a little bit better, which you expect guys that are true freshmen coming in to have to do, but in terms of the foundation being laid, in terms of him having so many different aspects that you can build on and improve on, I think Des Evans is a guy that, you know, it's just a matter of time before we really see how good he can be. And, and I know Carolina fans are definitely excited about him as well. Well, the frame is there mm -hmm. and the athletic ability is there. And the other things are starting to pick up. We, you know, there were times last year he appeared a little overmatched. There were times last year where it was – very clear he was in the process of adjusting to playing at the major level and there was a play against Notre Dame there was a screen pass I believe it was they're running back a play near the goal line and you know, that was one of those great film session moments that Des had and you know, all young players have them and and what was interesting and, and one of the things I took that would be near the top of my list of, of really important bullet points what we learned in the spring is that Mac and Jay Bateman both said that Des got it. They were very complimentary to Des, very complimentary about his body filling out, the toughness there, uh, learning the playbook. Some of his teammates talked about how he really needed to learn the playbook. He needed to understand uh, what to do out there because you can be the greatest physical specimen on the planet, Jacob, and if you break the wrong way on a play, you're not that good. Mm -hmm. You need to, to read and anticipate – and be totally in sync with the other 10 guys out there, especially when you play a highly athletic position that Des plays. Des being out of position, Des making the wrong read can be disastrous. That can, that can, that can lead to big plays by the opposition and, and all kinds of breakdowns. So that's a big part of the progress that he had to make uh, this past spring and is still working on now and will when, when fall camp opens August 4th. And that's what we were told was the biggest part of his game that grew. Now, physically, he looked bigger. He's a long dude. He's always going to be long. Mm -hmm. But he looked more filled out in the spring, and that'll be more the case when we get to August, when we get a chance to go to, to fall camp and watch these kids in person. But they said the other boxes were being checked, and I've got no reason to doubt that. So if that's the case, that great physical specimen, that long, strong body, the guy that can make plays, if you go back and look at his high school film, 
that length really served him well. Suddenly, those those attributes become more a factor of who he is on the field, mm-hmm. and we'll see him a lot more. You know, 35 of his snaps came against Western Carolina. That was an indication that he needed to just get out there and play. Yeah. He needed to stay on the field for a whole series and get back out there for another whole series. And he had to go through the mental aspect of constantly reading and adjusting while on the field. He had 14 against Miami and 17 against AM. So they trusted him enough in those games. He had 11 against Notre Dame and he started. Okay. So there were some issues. They pulled him and he got a chance to learn. Uh, with Western Carolina, and then, of course, Miami got a few snaps. And 17 in the Orange Bowl against a and is really important. They trust him. They, they, they went in there hell-bent on winning that game. So they were putting guys out there, yes, to get them experience, but also B, and more so, to win that game. It was very important for them to win that game. And he played 17 snaps against a very physical offensive line, against a club that ran hard, against a veteran quarterback that he had to read and he had to be on top of his mental game. So – each of those 17 snaps were incredibly valuable for Des last year and made him a better player. And him getting that trust toward the end of the year shows me that some of the changes that Mac and Bateman talked about this spring started to occur last November and December. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think – and that kind of feeds into the question I wanted to ask you next because I thought, I thought Des, thinking back to the spring, particularly during that spring game, was a, was a guy that – not only fans are really impressed with, but he was kind of one of our standout performers from that game who, you know, really showed some really positive glimpses. So I want to ask you this, besides the physical attributes, which you've talked about, we've seen him get a little bit bigger. He's already a long dude. That's already there. What were your kind of overall impressions of, of being at some of those open practices in the spring game of Des Evans in particular? Well, he, he didn't participate. I think in one of the practices Mm -hmm. that we went to. Mm -hmm. Um, So I, we had three open practices that media was allowed to go to. And then we had the spring game. I'm telling you, the thing that just stood out, we talked about Miles Murphy in that video, how he looked like a fourth year guy. Hmm. Dez didn't look like a dude who just got to campus last hmm. season. When you saw him in warm ups, he, you know, and, and this is not criticism. It's just that he looked like a kid that needed to go through the college program and needed a whole year and needed to go. So much of this is about, you know, carrying yourself like you're the guy. And you have to go through the experiences sometimes to be that. Very few players step in from day one. They're the guy, okay? Uh, even with Sam Howe, he had to go through some bumps in spring practice and a couple of weeks in the fall camp before they named him the guy. They obviously knew they had something special there. In Dez's position, it takes more time for most mm-hmm. of those guys. So the thing that struck me in spring practice is he just looked a lot more like a guy who's ready to go out there and play 30, 35 snaps and the punishment isn't going to affect him. And it, they say that the, the, the knowing the, uh, the game plan, understanding the playbook, understanding what to do, all the mental stuff is coming together. And I got no reason to believe that he's not going to be at the very minimum a solid player when he's on the field for North Carolina and certainly gives a lot of depth to that hybrid position, which hasn't had a ton of depth that they could totally rely on since Jay Bateman got there. So now that we see they've got Tamon Fox, they've got Hopper, they've got Chris Collins, they've got Dez Evans, we might see Jay Bateman dial up a few more things because he doesn't have to worry about managing a guy who's going to play 70 snaps or 65 snaps. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dez can give them a lot of reps so they can split some of that up. They're going to be fresher, just like we talked about with the defensive line. And as a result, we could see them do stuff in the fourth quarter. Remember, Mac talked about them wearing down late against Notre Dame, talked about them wearing down late against A&M. Well, having more depth and guys that you could trust for a significant number of reps, especially a full eight or nine snap possession, for example, having those kind of guys means that you're not going to, that your chances of being worn down late are less than what they were. And I think that's where this program is headed on the defensive end of the ball. And guys like Miles Murphy and Des Evans and what Javari Ritchie can bring them, all that stuff. And Chris Collins' ascent at the other hybrid spot, Mm -hmm. that's very, very important in that process. Definitely. Last thing I want to ask you before we wrap this one up. Um, I know it's still kind of far out. We obviously haven't got to fall camp yet. Still still a few weeks away from that, Phil. Um, But overall, what do you foresee Des Evans' role being on next year's team um, when the season does start up in Blacksburg? I think he, I think he's going to play. In, I think he's destined for a passing 
situation type guy because mm-hmm. of his ability to move. He's got the ranges. He should be able to cover. He should be able to rush. He should be able to adapt if they're if the offense calls an audible or whatever kind of shifts that they're showing. They're going to throw a lot of eye candy out there. He's got to be able to adapt to eye candy and not let it woo him too much to the point where he makes a bad read and takes himself out of a play. If that's not an issue at all, I could see him getting 30, 35 snaps a game. And I could see him being on the field in very difficult, challenging situations. I think he can probably eventually handle that. I don't know if he's going to play a lot of those scenarios in Blacksburg. That still might be Taman. That might be Hopper. That might be Collins. We'll see how those battles go when we get to August, but I think Dez is going to be in the mix to handle that stuff at some point this year. And that's important because they're going to have him for at least another year. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a guy who you could see his snaps grow too. You might see 18 to 25, you know, in September, and then you might see 30 in in October, might see more than that in, in November and into December. And I think that that's actually good for North Carolina because there's a little more high end talent, for him than maybe some of the other guys. So if he continues to approach that talent level, he's getting better. The hybrid spot's getting better. Carolina's defense is getting better. Yeah, and he's got time to develop too. I think the returning of Fox and Hopper just really aids to that. Because even looking at Snapcats last year, Hopper in terms of that hybrid position, Fox led it with 687. Hopper was right behind him with 621. And then you had Chris Collins at around 240. Came on Rucker, we haven't even mentioned it, around the 193 mark. And then you had Des Evans, who was fifth most in that hybrid position in terms of snaps with around 170, like I mentioned. So the fact that he doesn't have to be relied on, like if, you know, Fox and Hopper have gone and you're like, okay, Des, you got to give us this amount of snaps a game because we, we rely on you. I think that's going to help his, his – And, uh, and I should have mentioned process. Rucker. I did mm-hmm. mention Rucker, and this is a, co- a podcast about Kevin Rucker. I think we – and we, we've either done one. I don't or even remember. Really, we've done so many now. I can't even. He can do so many things that I'm not going to just qualify him just as a hybrid guy. He mm-hmm. can be just that guy. He, he's certainly a hand on the ground kind of guy too. He did a lot of that last year too. But yeah, that that position group is pretty strong. I mean, they put they moved Ethan West over there. He's a pretty interesting athlete. Who I think at time might get on the field and help this program out too. But but specifically with Des, you got to love the potential. I mean, I know that when a coach sees a guy like that walk into his program, they're like, oh gosh. Yeah. If we could just make sure a few of these things get sorted up, we could have something special. Here. So I think special is something that could occur with Des Evans down the road. I don't know if that's going to be this year or might not be in September, but there we're talking about guys in the program now, Jacob, that have the kind of potential that they can end up in the NFL. Yeah. They've produced NFL guys in the past, but there's more of an abundance in the younger classes now on that side of the ball. They've got to work. They've got to get bigger, stronger, smarter, and all that kind of stuff. They've got to be more consistent. But, you know, if you're talking about future NFL guys and you throw in Des Evans' name and Miles Murphy and Javari Ritzy and Keyshawn Silver, we could go through a lot of names here. None of that would surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me of all of them in the NFL one day. Yeah. That's the kind of potential that he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a, a, a new era at Carolina football in terms of just NFL potential guys. Well, we didn't see that as much under Fedor, um, but now it's getting back to that point. Where well, we saw it in the 90s. We yep, saw it yep. in the 90s last time, Matt. Was yeah, last time, Matt. He knows what he's yeah, doing, that's for sure. 97 team had three defensive guys taken in the first round. Yeah, and I think they're not quite there yet, but they're getting to that point, the way they're recruiting. I think, I think they're trending in pretty strong in that direction. Yeah, I would completely agree. And, you know, from the defensive line videos we've already done, I mean – Des Evans is so much potential, but there's even arguably guys out there that we ex- expecting more for next season that are the same class as him. So yeah, just so much talent on that defensive line. And that I think Des Evans is a guy that kind of like we mentioned with Miles Murphy, maybe next year is a developmental keep developing. And then the junior season, maybe it's really the takeoff period where you see him excel. And right. up. Yeah. Yeah. His, I think his, uh, I think that's definitely a real a realistic expectation. So yeah, Des Evans, a lot of potential. We'll see how things shake up this year, but definitely a guy we expect to, to play a good number of snaps across that defensive line as the season moves on. But I think it's a good place to wrap this one up. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. You guys know what to do. Make sure you go check out the videos we haven't done. Oh, excuse me. We've already done. Uh, you can find that in a playlist on the front. And have a lot more coming. That's what you meant to say. Yeah, got and a lot and more check out for the videos we haven't done yet because we still got some a few more to do. So definitely stay Just, tuned. If you're not a subscriber and you don't go to our pay our tarillustrator.com and shame on you if you're not, mm-hmm. and you just hang out on our channel. You know, every day you get a, if, you, if you subscribe, you can get the notification. We roll these things out like crazy. Oh, Sometimes man. we actually make them public mm-hmm. on the channel. 
Mm -hmm. 12, 24 hours before we even pop them on the website. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, hit that notification bell. If you're a subscriber, because you'll know every time we upload, you'll be that you'll get notified about it and you can hop on there and watch those. So uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, we, we uploaded about 21 videos total. So we're putting, we're putting the work in over here. There's plenty of more content coming out as well. So y'all make sure to keep it locked to Tar Hill Illustrated YouTube channel and Tar Hill Illustrated Dot com but you guys know i've been jacob turner he's been andrew jones as always like share hit that notification bell and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one thanks guys